today we're capitalized at um, about 18 billion pounds or, or 28 billion dollars. Uh, we have uh, billings, advertising billings of 90 billion around the world. We have revenues, if you include our associates, that's companies we own 20 to 49 percent of, we have revenues of 22 billion. If I exclude those, it's 18 billion. Uh, we have 170,000 people, including associates, in 110 countries. Uh, we do advertising with our established brands like J. J. Walter Thompson, like Ogilvy, Young and Rubicum, and Gray. We do media investment management through Group M, for example, here in Mexico with Mindshare, MEC, Mediacom, and Maxis. We, do, we have our data investment management business, our research business through Kantar and Millwood Brown and TNS and Goldfarb, for example, here in Mexico. We have our public relations and public affairs business, Hill and Knowlton, Burson Marstella, Conan Wolf. We have our branding and identity businesses, Fitch, the brand union, Landor, our healthcare businesses like Sutler and Hennessy and Gray Healthcare. And last but not least, we have our digital businesses like Wonderman, Ogilvy One, VML, 8KQA. Uh, our, our biggest market is, is the US, uh, with revenues of about $6.2, $6.3 billion. Uh, second biggest is the UK, because of, that's where we started, with about um, 2.8 2 billion. And then the third biggest market is now China, with 1.5 billion. Fourth is Germany, with 1.4 billion. And then France is fifth. Uh, with about 950 million. So uh, our biggest client is Ford Motor Company. Our second biggest client is Unilever. Our third biggest client is Procter & Gamble. But we work with most of the large uh, multinational companies, but also the big local companies. So for example, here in, in, in Mexico, we would work with Bimbo and companies like that that have established big presences in Mexico and then regionally in Latin America and the United States. So uh, in terms of strategy, which I think is, is, is important, we have a very simple strategy, one sentence. Might be wrong, but it's a simple one. New markets, new media, data investment management and integration. What we have to do is become much more smart, smarter. So if I take our $22 billion of revenue. Four billion is in media investment management. About six billion is in digital. So that makes a total of 10. And about another four and a half billion is in data. So you could argue that two thirds to three quarters of our business is not in the Dom Draper um, mad men area, right? But is more in the maths men. It's balanced. Now, when I, and when I say that, the, the mad men and the mad women get upset with me because they think that you know, they're less important. They aren't less important. They're still very important, but it means that other things are equally important. And just like media has become more important to balance creative, so we're starting to see technology becoming more important. So science in our business is becoming as important as art or craft. So when you look, it's interesting, when you look at uh, Mad Men, there was actually one scene in Mad Men which was, I think, really, really accurate. A lot of it was not accurate, or certainly my recollections were not uh, uh, of, of the, the drunken debauchery that you see on uh, Mad Men. But one thing was very interesting, the media director, well, it wasn't a director, the media manager, but comes into a board meeting and complains that he doesn't have a shareholding and he's not on the board. And that was very reminiscent of what happened about 30, years ago where media started to get uh, more representation. Media had been the poor relation and then it got more into balance. Today what we're seeing is science and data and application of technology get more important in relation to the creative process. Our strategy is the new markets, the new media, the data and the integration. And that's a reflection of what our clients are doing. You know, if you look at our clients, what are they doing? They're expanding in the fast growth markets like here in Mexico. You know, recent changes in government fiscal legislation notwithstanding. They're expanding in Asia, in Latin America, in Africa, Middle East, Central and Eastern Europe. They're expanding in online, although they haven't expanded far enough because only 20% of their budgets go online. They're expanding into data because there's more data available, particularly in the online experience. And they're trying to integrate to get better efficiencies and to get better work. So 
every part of our strategy is geared to trying to understand what clients want. And if we're correct in diagnosing that, then I think we will have been, will be very successful. And you know, we're, we're doing well at the moment. And we, we're not doing as well as I would like to do, but you know, that there's always room for improvement. The reality is that the world has changed. You know, a lot of people, we were talking about it over breakfast with some of our Mexican clients. A lot of younger people in Mexico don't watch television. And they're, they're watching screens in different formats. We were talking about the growth of smartphones here in Mexico and the, the incursion of cheaper smartphones from China and elsewhere into this market. So the, the way that people consume TV, I mean, the amount of time that you and I spend watching a screen actually has gone up. But the screens have changed. They're not a fixed screen in a console or on a wall. They can be a tablet. They can be a smartphone. I can do it on the move. You know, I never thought I would watch a football game on a smartphone, but I will now. I mean, I will, if I'm, I, I will go to Brazil for the World Cup, but if I'm, you know, watching a World Cup match, I would quite happily watch it on a smartphone or on a tablet, uh, if I can, uh, in, wherever I am. I think we, I think one of the interesting things about our business, and it's one of the problems with our business, is that we never really get taken seriously. We're sort of an offshoot of show business. And, you know, they think of the consulting business as being a serious, but, you know, McKinsey. They think of uh, investment banking and Goldman Sachs being a serious business, but they think of the advertising industry as being a bit flaky. You know, it's um, a little bit of a, it's Mad Men, right? So we don't have a serious image. I mean, I, I'm trying to remember whether a series has been done about consulting companies or investment banks, I suppose to some extent there have been series, but, but, but I don't think we, people take us serious enough. And I think in, interestingly, if I look at you know, what I do today, for example, in Mexico, you know, we are a very serious business. We work with the, we work with the most serious businesses here in, uh, in Mexico. We work with the government here in Mexico. We work with NGOs here in Mexico. We work with media owners here in, in Mexico. So we, we work with journalists here. You know, we, we interact with all the, the communities. So I think the business, you know, it's a trillion dollar industry. $500 billion in traditional media and $500 billion in market research or data as we call it, data investment management, branding and identity and all the other things that we do. So, so it, it is a serious industry, but the problem that we have is I don't think people take us seriously enough. That, that coming back to this question about whether we're an art or a science or both, uh, we do ourselves a, a, a disservice. Um, because I think that doesn't mean, you know, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna say, well, he's being boring. But, but it's, you know, people bemoan the lack of personality in our business. You know, they look back to the days of David Ogilvy or Bill Burnback and say they were much more colorful personalities. And that's probably true. But on the other hand, you know, we are seriously involved. If I look at the Financial Times or the Wall Street Journal every day, I would say that we are involved in a very high proportion of the stories that they write about in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in most countries of the world, the government is one of our biggest clients, particularly the year before an election. For reasons I'll, get, I'll let you work out. I recently said in Ad Week that, um, that you know, I enjoy what I do. It's more interesting than it's ever been. But I only own 1.5% of uh, WPP. And so if, uh, you know, they, they, if they want to get rid of me at one, some, one point in time, they'll get rid of me. But I'll carry on as long as I can do it. And as long as I'm sure all my compensation, of which there is some controversy occasionally, more than some, uh, all my compensation is based on the, the growth and development of WPP. I mean, my, my whole wealth such as it is, is focused on WPP, which is quite unusual actually, because the conventional wisdom is that you should, you should spread your wealth. You shouldn't have it tied up in one company. I have everything, basically, that I own tied up in this company and its success, which is very unusual. And I've continued to do that over 28 years because I haven't taken options and sold options and then reloaded. I've kept my investment in the company. So I'll carry on as long as, but, but I said in, in Adweek, you know, um, uh, I won't commit suicide, I'll be murdered. 
So when they're ready to, to take me off to the glue factory, I'll go.